Hi there, another quick video and this time about NVIDIA memory diagnostics. In a previous one I showed you how you can do memory diagnostics on basically all the cards, no matter what a manufacturer is, using Linux and a simple Python script. It works reasonably well, but it's kinda involving and takes a lot of time. So with IMD boards there are no alternatives. But luckily for us, someone at NVIDIA had leaked their internal modular diagnostic software, or MODS for short, so we can use that to determine the bad RAM banks on NVIDIA boards. So let me quickly show you how to set up this program and how to use it to diagnose memory problems. This is by no means an extensive tutorial on how to use mods, because it's quite a complicated tool with really a lot of possibilities, but more like a short intro to get you started. So, first things first, where do you get it? Well, as basically everything these days, you just google it out. So let's do that. Let's open our browser and let's type NVIDIA modular diagnostic software and I think you can pretty much find your way from here on. So we have downloaded our mods zip file. Let's extract it here and let's see what's inside. Okay inside we have three folders and a lot of batch files. So these batch files are used to start mods program with different parameters. Then we have a DOS to Linux folder, where is another batch file which is used to basically bootstrap yourself from DOS to Linux using grub. Because this mod software is running under Linux. Then we have mods folder with configuration files and we have our program archive. Now we can do it later under Linux but it's a good idea to extract this archive now so let's do that. And here we have our program files. There's also a PDF which is like a software documentation as you can see it's quite a long one. So as I mentioned before, there is a lot of stuff going on here. So if you're interested, then you can, you know, dive deeper. But for now, let's concentrate on a basic functionality. So let's get back. Let's go to our root folder. And yeah, we also have a tiny folder where it's a tiny Linux kernel. And that's pretty much it. So what do we need now is some kind of bootable media to boot into and then run our mods program. So the easiest way to do this is to make a bootable USB drive with a, let's say, free DOS on it. So let's do that. Let's use Rufus for that. You can use any other software that you like for this purpose. Let's see, we want a free DOS. Let's name our USB drive mods and let's start. Okay, and we're done. So let's copy all of our files now. And basically that is enough. In principle we could use mods now, but in order to minimize work on the command line, let's automate a couple of things. So as I mentioned, this software runs under the Linux, but as it stands now, we would boot to DOS. So I think it's a good idea to boot straight to Linux, and we can do that by modifying our auto exec bad file. So let's enable our system files view. Yes, of course I do. And now we can see our auto exec bad file. Let's edit it. So let's copy this DOS to Linux grab line here. And 
And now we should boot straight to Linux. Okay, that's one thing on the list. Now let's see how we can make our life easier even more. So as I mentioned before, all these bad files are used to start mods program using some kind of arguments. So for instance, let's open this one. And as you can see before starting Linux, we are doing a couple of things here. So we are copying free files to some respective folders here using dos copy command. Let's copy these commands to our auto exec file. Let's close this one. And let's see. So we are copying file up mfg to folder called cmod args. Args stand, I think, for arguments. So let's see what this file does. Yep, so basically this is the arguments for starting mods program. You can find all those arguments in a PDF file that I showed you. Like for instance, what does read spec does. And here you can see the explanation. Use the user defined specs and etc. etc. So now because we are basically interested in memory diagnostics most of the time we will be running not mods but a um, separate module which is called mats it's used exclusively to test memory so i think it's a good idea to make a separate configuration file just for this purpose so let's do that let's see in our auto exec file that we will be using file name up mats and let's make this file by just copying something and renaming it and make sure when editing these files to use notepad plus plus or any equivalent program that is able to save in linux format so I have quickly gone through all the available options and I think this is what it makes sense to use. So first let's run some tests like test free. These tests are all memory related. Like for instance, this test free will be, here it is, number three, maths test, engineering frame buffer memory test, and so on. Basically I included everything that is memory related so it's test free then um test 18 test 19 test 52 test 111 test 112 test 133 next we want to say that we are running as manufacturers we want this null display we want to pull our interrupts let's see what else we can include oh yeah we want our power state locked also i think it's a good idea to say that we don't want any thermal slowdowns and we want mats info right i think that's pretty much it and let's save it and just make sure that we're saving it as unix file not mcdos okay let's close those files and now we have our opmats config file, which will be copied to our program directory before we boot to Linux. And I think this is pretty much it. Let's boot from our newly made flash drive and see what happens. Okay, so let's run a couple of scenarios. Let's say that we have a video card that we want to test and it has video output. So first thing to do is to go to your BIOS and make sure that this video card is set as your primary display and that you have your integrated graphics disabled. So I have set it up 
for PCI Express here. Let's save it and let's boot to our flash drive. And as you can see, Linux has started and we are running mods now. It will run its preset test for quite a while now and will give a result at the end. Okay, and we have booted. Mods had run its tests and they failed, but that's all right because we're not interested in mods here. What we want to run now is a standalone memory test program called MATS. So let's go to our program folder. Let's see how it's called. And our program folder is called the same as our program version is 367.38.1. So let's change our working directory to this one. Okay, let's see what's going on there. And you can see all the program that we have and what we are interested in is program called Mats. All right, and there is a couple of arguments that you can use with this program. So let's launch help. So you can try all of them, play with them, but we're interested mainly in two of those options. That's option A and option C. Option A runs certain amount of megabytes through the frame buffer and option C runs a certain percentage of all the memory. So for example, if we use A and 10, that means we will test 10 megabytes of memory. And if we use C and let's say 10, that means that we're using 10% of all of our memory. So depending on how much memory do you have, that could be 400 megabyte for, you know, four gigs and so on. Okay, so let's run mats with argument E and let's test five max of our memory and let's pipe our output to less so we can pause that. And here you go. We have two RAM banks that are failing. That's first bank of channel B and the second bank of channel C. So let's quit that. So every time Matt's runs, it's create a report file called report.txt and you can find it in a program directory right here. So you have all those results recorded in that file and you can look at it later. If you don't see any errors, of course, you can test more of your memory, play with all those program options, but usually 10 or 20 megabytes are enough. Okay, but what if you do not have any video output from your graphic card? What then? Well, then the only option is to connect that card as a secondary one, use your integrated card, and use slightly different Matt's command line. So let's test that. Let's get to BIOS and let's set our graphic card to integrate the GPU. Okay, let's save those changes and let's connect our monitor to integrated graphics card. Okay, so now we are getting our video signal from integrated graphic card. Let's boot our USB drive. Okay, let's get back to our program folder. Let's change directory. Okay, and let's try to run mats now with the same five max of memory. And you can see we get error that this card is not recognized. Okay, let's do a couple things now. Let's first try to reinitialize our cards. Let's run mods GPU test point GS and let's say skip. A RAM state 
init mfg. Let's see what that does. Okay, and now let's run mats with another argument n for index and let's say we want to run on a card index one so that will be n1 and the same five max of memory let's see what happens now okay and it seems we have successfully run mats i just forgot to pipe the output ls let's do it again Okay, and we get the same two bad banks. So now the question is, how do you know which exactly banks are first channel A, channel B, channel C, and so on and so forth. So let me take a photo and explain it to you. Okay, so we have our card on the screen. So let's open the report that our maths program made should be somewhere here yep report all right and let's see what's going on here so we have a card here with 384 bits wide memory bus what that means is we have six memory channels from a to f and each of them consisting of two memory banks, one for the lower bits from 0 to 31, and another RAM bank from higher bits from 32 to 63. So 12 chips total. So how do we match those six memory channels to our 12 memory chips? And the answer is you have to look at the GPU and when the PCI Express slot is at the bottom, you have to go from the far right counterclockwise. So here we have our memory channel A, this is memory channel B, C, etc. And we have to start counting from our higher bits. So this will be our memory channel A higher bits. Next we will have memory channel A with lower bits. Then again, memory channel B with higher bits. Channel B with lower bits. And etc, etc. Okay, and now let's look. We have some errors on channel B lower bits. That means this chip. Let's highlight it. And also we have some errors on channel C higher bits. So here we go. That's our bad RAM banks. Again, this doesn't mean that it's 100% bad RAM banks because it can be those tracks to the GPU, it can be GPU memory controller, it can be some knocked off elements on the other side of the board and so on. But this diagnostics gives you a good clue where you should start concentrating your efforts. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.